Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic, wait a minute, is this a quartic equation? We'll find out, but we're going to be solving this equation. Z plus I to the fourth power is the same as Z minus I to the fourth power. How is that possible? Okay, let's see how that works. I'll be presenting three methods and I will start with the third one this time. I don't know if I have done before, but uh, I will start with the third method because third method is something you would probably not use for this problem. It's something that I almost always recommend you, you to use if you're trying to solve for z in an equation like z squared is, you know, absolute value of z plus i, whatever. And in these cases, you know, an equation like this, it will be helpful to replace z with a plus bi. And of course, A plus B, I is very special. Do you know why? Because it's the name of this channel. Well, of course, that's not the only reason, but you get the idea. So if you replace Z with A plus B, I and work this out, come on, that's going to be a lot of work, too much work. I don't think that's a good idea. So let's skip it. But why did I show you that? Because this is something you should know, but you don't have to use it, right? Obviously. So let's go ahead and jump to the first method. So it's going to be like 3, 1, 2. So for my first method, I am going to use the following. I want to use substitution. So z plus i to the fourth power is the same as z minus i to the fourth power. Let's go ahead and use substitution because substitution is awesome. Let's call this a and let's call this b. What am I getting? a to the fourth equals b to the fourth. Mathematicians are crazy because they can just simplify things like crazy, right? All of a sudden. Of course, it doesn't mean the answer is going to be simple, but at least at the moment, we have a simpler equation. Now, how do you solve something like this? In the real world, you would just square root both sides and you would get two results, a squared equals b squared and a squared equals negative b squared. But in the complex world, things are different. Things are more complex. So let's see how that works. This is nice because, and I just thought about it, Come on, stop trying to connect. Uh, anyways, <laughs> in the complex world, this is going to branch off. Okay, you ready? Let me move this a little bit so I can branch off easily. There we go. Now, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to split into two cases. First one, a squared equals b squared. And the second case is a squared equals negative b squared. If you think about it in the real world, the bottom one, it would only be satisfied by zero because no square can be negative, right? But in the complex world, things are very different. Again, branching off of the first branch, I'm going to get from here a equals b or a equals negative b. Basically, I did take square roots and that's what I got, right? Or absolute value can be used, so on and so forth. If you square root here, things are different because how do you square negative b squared? Negative b squared is negative if b is not zero, so you have to use i. And i is very helpful, so a is bi, or a is negative bi. Make sense? Awesome. Now, don't think of a and b as real numbers in this context, by the way, because remember, we said z plus i equal to a, so a does not have to be real. b doesn't have to be real either. So a plus bi and these two things are very different. Sorry, I, I should probably use a different variable, but it's too late. Now, I'm going to number these equations because I'm going to refer to them with numbers. Let's call this number one, this number two, number three, and number four, top to bottom. And I'm going to start working with number one. And it's actually really good because you kind of look at it case by case. Make sense? Now remember, a is z plus i and b is z minus i. So remember that all the time, okay? a equals b means z plus i equals z minus i. And this is a breakthrough. Yay, we cancel out z and we get i equals zero because two i is zero. Come on. Is that possible at all? I don't think so. Well, that was a joke. No solutions from here. Too bad. Second case. Second case was, remember, a equals negative b. z plus i equals negative of z minus i. z plus i is negative z plus i. This time, it's better because i cancels out and we end up with z equals 0. Is that acceptable? Absolutely. z can be 0, right? And you'll notice if you replace z with 0, it's going to satisfy the equation, okay? So z equals zero is good, it works. Case number three. What was that? A equals bi. So I'm going to write it as z plus i equals z minus i all multiplied by i. 
This is going to give me z plus i equals z i minus i squared, which is plus 1. Remember, I told you in lecture videos, i squared is negative 1. Don't ever forget that. How do you solve this? Subtract z i, subtract i, factor out z, 1 minus i, 1 minus i. Do you see what I see? z equals 1. Come on, 1 minus i times what equals 1 minus i itself, right? So z equals 1 is another solution. Uh-oh, so far we haven't found anything complex, did we? Well, these are all complex numbers, but they are also real, right? We're looking for non-real solutions. Come on. Number four. Let's see if we can find it this time. And number four, case number four was a equals negative bi. Remember? Did you forget? Come on. Z plus i is negative i times z minus i. I want to write it that way. Z plus i is negative z i plus i squared, which is minus one. Again, same thing. Put the z and z i together and put the negative 1 and i together. z times 1 plus i is negative 1 times 1 plus i. Oh, come on, we can factor it. Wait a minute, z equals negative 1 from it. Oh, man, we didn't get a complex solution. I mean, non-real solution this time either. Too bad. So the solution set is going to be 0, 1, and negative 1. All real. Are you serious? Of course, because if you replace z with 0, you get i to the fourth equals negative i to the fourth, which is one comma. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is awesome. But you'll decide which one is better. Well, at least we don't have case by case thing. We're just going to do the whole thing. And for this one, I'm going to use an awesome formula called the binomial theorem. You love it, don't you? So let's go ahead and expand it. One, four, six, four, one, the Pascal's triangle. And, oops, we're going to get 6a squared b squared, and then from symmetry, 4ab cubed plus b to the 4. If you apply it to both of these equations, you're going to get the following. First of all, let me simplify this, because once I simplify that, the other one is going to be fairly easy. Uh, well, or I can do both at the same time. doesn't matter. But anyways, uh, we're going to get from here, z to the 4th plus 4z cubed i plus 6z squared i squared plus 4z i cubed plus i to the fourth. And for the other one, we're going to get z to the fourth minus 4z cubed i plus 6z squared i squared minus 4z i cubed plus i to the fourth. Notice that these two things are equal. They're not being added. They're equal to each other. So by setting these equal to each other, actually, you're going to be able to cancel some terms out. Like z to the fourth is going to cancel out. And then 6z squared i squared is going to cancel. You don't have to worry about evaluating it. And i to the fourth is going to cancel out, even though it's easy. Now we get the following. 4z cubed i, which is going to give you 4iz uh, cubed. And i cubed is negative i, so I'm going to write it as minus 4iz equals negative 4iz cubed. And this is negative i again, so it's going to be a plus sign. But I have to kind of write it with a plus sign. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Now let's put everything on the same side. 8iz cubed minus 8iz equals 0. Don't you love this? I mean, we didn't have to go into cases, and we're just finding it, like a simple equation. Very easy. We can take out 8iz as a common factor. We get z squared minus 1 equals 0. And i is not 0. 8 is not 0, as far as I know. From here, we get z equals 0, or z equals 1, or z equals negative 1, as before. And... This doesn't give us any non-real solutions, but that's okay. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.